Hello, Entheos Academy. This is Miss Leek coming at you from my classroom. And um, I have another book for First Chapter Friday, uh, one that I recommend, re recommend to you. This is called Zach's Lie, and it is recommended um, by Miss Haley. She actually, this is her book, and she let me borrow it. Um, it's an interesting story. The back talks about living a lie. Um, it says, Zach Granger's whole identity is a lie. His name, his hometown, even his eye color. Because Zach's father is in jail and his family has been forced to join the witness security program. Zach has trouble getting used to his new life until he meets Sam, the strange custodian at his new school, and Caitlin, a girl who must make his whole upbringing worthwhile. But just as Zach begins to pull himself together, he faces danger again. And this time, his actions could determine the fates of everyone he cares about. So I'm going to go ahead and um, play the first five minutes of this book. And then, yeah, I thought it was very intriguing. It's um, the Witness Protection Program is always it's just interesting to me. So this is a book that's a little bit about that. Flight, Chapter 1. Friday, August 25th. Commander If is in my shirt pocket. We are sitting on an airplane in the last row. Five people, my sister, my mother, Aunt Doris, and Uncle Don. We got on the airplane before the other passengers. Too risky to board through the gate, Uncle Don had explained. Airport security led us through the cargo area underneath the airport. This must have all been prearranged because no one blinked an eye as we wove our way through the maze of ba baggage conveyor belts. When we got on board, the flight attendants looked at us with curiosity, but they didn't ask us why we rated this kind of treatment. I guess they knew better. We'll be boarding the other passengers in a few minutes, one of the attendants said and showed us to our seats. Aunt Doris and Uncle Don took the aisle seats. Mom sat next to my sister on Aunt Doris's side. I took the window seat on Uncle Don's side. Mom has a book to read, my sister has a pile of movie magazines, and I have my journal and pencil. Aunt Doris and Uncle Don do not have anything to read. They are working. Aunt Doris has her head turned and is watching the flight attendants behind us put away cans of pop and juice. Uncle Don stares straight ahead. Here they come, Uncle Don says. The other passengers start making their way down the aisle, finding their seats, stuffing bags into the overhead compartments. The five of us stare at the passengers' faces, wondering if any of them know. Commander If had come to Jack Osborne when he was nine years old, just after his caped crusader days. Jack wasn't proud of this, but on windy nights, he used to slip into his sister's red leotard, safety pin a sheet around his neck, lean out his bedroom window with his arms stretched, and pretend to fly like the superheroes he watched on television. This had come to an end the night he leaned out a little too far and discovered he could not fly, falling through his father's grape arbor and snapping the thick gnarled vines that were said to have come from cuttings grown by President Thomas Jefferson at Monticello in 1804. Hearing the crash, Jack's father, Neil Osborne, ran outside in his boxer shorts and beamed the flashlight on his crumpled son, who was covered in red scratches and purple grape juice. He then shone the light up through the gaping hole in the arbor, took a deep breath, and slowly let it out through flared nostrils. Jack's mother, Patricia Osborne, called down from the bedroom window, Is everything okay? Mr. Osborne looked up and said, It's just another one of those darn caped crusaders. He must have stalled in the storm. Do I need to call 911? Mr. Osborne looked down at his only son. Jack had been to the hospital so many times for stitches and broken bones that his father had considered buying him a permanent room there. Is anything broken, Jacko? I think my leg, Jack said through gritted teeth. Mr. Osborne bent down with the flashlight and looked at Jack's leg. They're going to get a big kick out of these red leotards in the emergency room. As it turned out, both legs were broken, and Jack spent the next six weeks wired to a hospital bed with enough screws and pins in his legs to set off metal detectors for the rest of his life. The third day that Jack was in the hospital, his father brought him a wooden model of the space shuttle, which he had carved in his woodworking shop. Mr. Osborne was always doing something with his hands, 
building, carving, sketching, fixing, driving, writing, flying. Jack's earliest memories were of his father's busy and clever hands. The next day, as Jack was practicing space shuttle landings on his cast in his hospital bed, he discovered that the cockpit opened and inside was a tiny astronaut. He named the astronaut Commander Jacko at first. Commander Jacko had been a Navy fighter pilot, as Jack's father had been before he married Jack's mother. He looked a lot like Jack's father when he was young. Although at two inches tall, Commander Jacko was quite a bit shorter than Neil Osborne. Jack changed the astronaut's name the day his father caught Jack talking to him in the hospital room. His father heard Jack jabbering away from down the hallway. He came into Jack's room expecting to see his wife or a nurse, but Jack was alone. He was lying on the bed with both legs and casts, an IV tube attached to his arm, and the space shuttle with the tiny astronaut resting on his chest. Who were you talking to, Jacko? Jack stared at his father as if he didn't understand, but he knew perfectly well what his father was asking. Mr. Osborne sat down on the bed and picked up the space shuttle. I sure wanted to fly one of these babies. Jack knew this. Everyone knew this. His father had come very close to becoming a shuttle pilot. Jack wasn't sure what had gotten in his way, but it had been something to do with some trouble he had gotten into when he was a combat pilot during the Gulf War. Okay, everyone, that's the first five minutes of Zach's Lie. It's a super good book, fast read, really interesting to think about. So enjoy.